purring on a mouth call can be a deadly tool to get a gobbler inside a shooting range. And if you watch this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. Let's get after it. This is probably one of my bigger bucks to date. Guys, I cannot believe that that actually worked. Looks like a double long shot. It was hot, it was really hot. Welcome back to the channel guys and thanks for taking the time to watch this video. So a couple of seasons ago, I was sitting on, on the edge of a fence row and I was calling back and forth to this gobbler all morning and he finally steps out into the field, right? I have one decoy out because it's late in the season and he's about 80 yards away and he's just staring at my decoy, right? And at this point, I know how to cluck, I know how to cut, I know how to yelp and I'm throwing everything I got at this guy and I'm trying to make some quieter sounds, but I just am not able to seal the deal, and I really feel like if I'd have been able to purr on a mouth call, I would have had another bird's beard hanging on my wall. So that's what today's video is about, guys. I'm gonna show you how to purr on a mouth call. It's taken me about two years to learn how to do it, and I really think that I can condense all that information and show you guys how to do it in about five to 10 minutes. Will you be perfect when you first start it? No, but you'll definitely be able to make the sound and then you'll be able to work on it from there within a week or two weeks. You should be competent enough to use this in the field. So let's get started. So there's basically two ways that I know of to do a purr. One is to use your lips and one is to use your throat. I'm gonna show you the difference in those two right now. So the first one was by rolling my lips, the second one was by using my throat, and that's the method that I'm going to teach you guys today. Here's why. With the lips, it's a very, very loud purr, and it's super hard to control your volume due to the amount of air you have to push out of your mouth in order to get your lips to rumble. Very, very loud, super hard to control the volume. Um, for that reason, I really, really like to use the throat rumble. I can get it really quiet. I think it just naturally sounds a little bit better too. So that's the call that we're going to focus on today. So there's all kinds of calls you can use to actually purr on. I like a call that produces a good high note. I'm personally running the Prodigy C. You can find this call on Shane Simpson's website. And he has a lot of videos out on finding your air channel and a whole bunch of other scientific stuff that we're not gonna get into here. But I'm running a Prodigy C call. It really, really works well for me. The million dollar question is how do you purr on a mouth call? Well, there's two things you're gonna need to do. One, you're gonna need to be able to move air over the call and make a sound like this. And then you're going to be ha you're going to have to be able to make a rumble or a vibration in your throat and push that sound over the call as well, which is what gives the purr its rumble, right? That is the hard part of this process, and this is the part of the process I think I can explain to you guys and really really shorten your learning curve. So let's jump into that. There's two ways, in my opinion, to get a really good gargle in your throat and use that for a purr call. One is to just pretend like you're gargling. <sighs> That vibration that you hear when pushed over the call, that's what makes the purr sound. The other thing you can do if you have trouble with that is imagine you've got some phlegm in your throat and you're trying to push it to the front. Both of those two sounds will produce a really, really nice purr. And you, when you, when you get to practice in it, you can make the volume higher, you can make it lower, and it'll really, really work well for you. But that is the sound that you need to make in order to produce a purr. You're pushing that sound over the reed, you're putting that vibration behind it, and that's how you get a purr sound. A couple of tips that'll, that'll also help shorten the learning curve for you is, uh, I had the tendency when I was first learning how to do this call to put, like to kind of start a whine before I would, I'd basically try to lead up to the purr. I'd get my sound going first before I added the rumble, and it created a really nasty high note before my purr. I'll show you what it sounds like. You want to avoid doing that. It sounds bad and it is not a sound a turkey makes. You want the sound and the rumble to start at the same time. It's really, really hard to do. It takes about a week or two to really, really get it down. But be conscious of that and try to start both the airflow and the rumble at the same time and you'll avoid a lot of that. 
The second thing is, and this took me a long time to figure out, you don't have to put a lot of tongue pressure on the call to, uh, to get it to make that rumble. In fact, the call is relatively loose in my mouth. My tongue is touching just the back part. The front of it is not touching at all. And the call is sitting pretty loosely in the top of my mouth when I do this. Too much tongue pressure will also make too much of a high sound and give you a high sound before the rumble. And it just doesn't work very well. So when you go to do the call, drop your lower jaw just a little bit, or at least this, this is what feels good to me. I drop my lower jaw just a little bit like that and I try to push here under the call and you'll be able to purr just like this. Well guys, that's pretty much the end of the video. I really hope this video helped you out. I do think if you follow the instructions in this, you can be making the sound within five to 10 minutes and then within a week or two, I think you'll be confident enough to take this to the field and apply it. Super awesome call and it'll definitely help you kill more gobblers. If you guys are new to turkey hunting and you want to know how to scout turkeys, I've actually done a video on that. I'm gonna put it in the suggested videos which you'll see pop up as this video starts to end. In that video, I take a super detailed dive into terrain types, reading topographical maps, how to scout before season. It's all in there. It's about a 20 minute video and it is packed full of information. So if you're new to turkey hunting or maybe even you're a veteran and you want to know a little bit more information about how to scout turkeys, make sure you watch for that video to pop up and you click on it and you watch it. Guys, I really appreciate you watching this video. I will catch you in the next one. And until then, good luck in the woods.